and in the southern France. 55,000 years. The second oldest cultural oasis in Europe is the Balkan and Bosnia and Bosnian pyramids are exactly in the middle of the Balkan Peninsula. 38,000 years. And the third oldest, Ukraine, around the Black Sea, about 28,000. But uh, from the late 1990s, we learned that there was a communication between Asia and South America. And this is important because of both uh, Lemuria and Motherland Mu. Because at that time, there were many more bigger islands than what we have today. So people were able to move uh, much easier than today between those islands. So what we are finding out that uh, 55,000 years back is when the human remains uh, originate in South America, which is totally... Did they find bodies? Or is that uh, based yeah. on legend? No, no, no. no. Uh, the way you do it with the genetic... Uh, uh, the way you do it, you do it uh, through DNA and the haplogroups, haplogroups. So basically, uh, descendants, even people who live there now in Peru, Colombia, and those countries, they have this gene. They have you know, the haplogroup, which we can trace back 55,000 years. And that would oh, be the phase. Is the this phase in Brazil, of, too? Would that yeah, be yeah, Brazil? The whole, the, whole, the whole Southern America, I mean, in Brazil, of course, we have pyramids hidden in Amazon, in the jungles. And, I mean, this, this country is totally, you know, untouched archaeologically. So, like I said, based on uh, uh, certain scientific research, some geological, some DNA, and some other records, we can be uh, very confident and claim that in the last 100,000 years, we did have very advanced civilizations. And now we can't count Mu? We can't count Motherland Mu forward? Motherland Mu, of course, but then I would say it goes even deeper in the past, and uh, it is questionable. Are we talking only about the physical aspect? I would say that was a transition phase when, uh, you know, our uh, grand-grand-grandfathers were moving from the spiritual aspect in a lower physical aspect. They wanted to experience the material world through the physical senses. So uh, probably there's a reason why, you know, you cannot really find any of the physical remains or, uh, you know. However, uh, Pacific is still, you know, untouched uh, when it comes to very serious uh, archaeological research even places like Easter Island, you know, the stories that the primitive, you know, local people from this island were able to move and carve and transport and erect those 375 ton uh, heads and bodies is, of course, unbelievable. And they are saying they used only the primitive stone tools. Again, it is impossible to shave those beautiful heads on this island, which is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we're talking 5,000 kilometers away from South America, 10,000 kilometers away from Tahiti. And then plus, they had the megalithic walls, they have stone spheres, and they have rondo rondo writing. I mean, only on this island, all other Pacific islands, you know, they had nothing. So it seemed that, that, that uh, it was some kind of the episode Probably somebody landed there, stayed for some time, and then left. And our planet was that the is giant? full of such. Do you, hmm? uh, I, I know you have to have scientific proof, but uh, was that, at least uh, in legends, was that giants from, we call them extraterrestrials, uh, regardless of the part of the uh, cosmos they come from, but could they have landed here? I've, I, I can't prove it, but I've heard stories in our Ace Folklife Society about giants. Uh, well, came giants and went. have been mentioned all over the planet. And okay. uh, they are in oral stories everywhere. It can be India, it can be Africa, it can be North America. And uh, let me remind you on a time when Smithsonian Institute was established, that was the second half of the 19th century. And the first assignment their teams had was to 
destroy mounds all over the United States of America and uh, get all the artifacts, bodies, bones from out of there. Those mounds, uh, some of them are very significant in size. We call them in archaeology uh, tumulus. Now, tumulus is an artificial conical hill. There are thousands of them. Today, there are a few of them, and they are you know, equally significant and impressive. For example, Cahokia National Park in the state of Illinois is a home for more than 120 pyramids. They call them mounds. They're actually pyramids. And uh, I read an interview in, uh, which was published in 1884 in Chicago Tribune, uh, where the journalist was asking the head of the Smithsonian team about their assignments. They said, well, you know, we have to destroy those mounds. We have to retrieve all the archaeological material, get it to Smithsonian. And what happened there? They, it seems that they were finding the bones of those giants because uh, some of them were like 12 feet, 14 feet, or even 20 feet in size. And, uh, you know, Today we know nothing about them. And, uh, well, isn't it seems that how that the giants were built in, in Egypt? Those statues are said to be exact replicas of beings. Uh, okay, that's no, that's, my, okay uh -huh. this is a very good question. I will answer that question also. Let me finish with the Smithsonian. So what happened yes. from the end of the 19th century, all this material ended up in the basements of Smithsonian Institutes, never to be seen by the public. So 99% oh. of their artifacts are actually hidden, and they are not exposed to us. So what they show, 1% okay. is really irrelevant. When it like comes Indiana to Jones it, movies. They, they throw them in the Pentagon down in the basement you know, somewhere. You know what? The last scene is exactly what's been happening. So when they show something <clears throat> like that in the fiction movie, you would say it's a fiction. When somebody shows up, Start talking about it, they say, oh, no, no, this is just a fiction from Indiana Jones. <laughs> I mean, the elites are very smart. They, smart, they yes. master the deceptions. Now, you ask me about, <laughs> Egypt. about Egypt. Of course, the stories that we heard from Egyptologists are really nothing but uh, the bedtime stories about the pharaohs <laughs> of the fourth dynasty building those pyramids with the 100,000 slaves. Well, wait a minute. Some of those blocks, like the biggest one in Kefren's pyramid, the second largest, is 220 tons. It's a granite block coming from Aswan from 500 miles to the south. How did they move 220 tons? I mean, Giants. 220 tons bigger people. It's almost 500,000 pounds. Half a million pounds, no way that they had technology to transport. They did not even have a wheel. When the Japanese tried to make a replica of the whole trip, they made just two ton block, two ton. They made a replica of little barge, little you know, boat that they could see on hieroglyphic writings. And the boat sunk with a two ton block. How to explain 220, 100 times bigger and heavier? So, obviously, it was not ancient pharaohs, as you know them, who are builders of those pyramids. And you ask if uh, some of those statues do show the giants. Well, again, let's invite science in help. The most important document from Egypt is actually not in Egypt. It is in Italy, in the Egyptian Museum in Turin. It is called the Turin King List. And it is on display. It's been there from 1820. At that time, Turin was part of France, and the French consul, you know, he got it on auction in Cairo. He brought it to then French, today Italy. And on this uh, papyrus, which is very long, all Egyptian rulers are listed in 11 columns. The last nine columns, are the third phase in Egyptian history. This phase is called Sons of Gods. Sons wow. Of Gods, Sons of Gods is what Egyptian pharaohs called themselves. They did not use 
term pharaoh, this is from ancient Greece from 2000 years ago, it has nothing to do with those rulers or kings. They call themselves sons of gods. And so, so the language those, has changed um, as well, right? The way yeah. we talk, the way we think, our cultures, exactly. our traditions, we don't even yeah. relate the same thoughts that they did back then, much less have we words don't. to match. Now, those sons of gods, they are actually homo sapiens. They are like you and I. So uh, those sons of God, some of them would rule Egypt two years, like King Tut, King Tutankhamun. Some of them 67 years, like Ramesses II. But they were humans. Now, the phase before this one, and this one started 5,100 years back with the king Menem who united Lower and Upper Egypt. Well, the phase before that was the phase of demigods or semi-gods or mythical kings. Now, those okay. demigods, they would rule Egypt 200, 300, or 400 years each, each. So imagine how long they could live. And the phase before this one is the phase of gods who descended from the sky to Egypt and who ruled Egypt. The last two phases, demigods and gods, lasted 36,620 years. And when you add 5,100 years of the third phase, sons of God, we are talking 41,000 years. So, if we want to know the real history of Egypt, we would need to go back for 40,000 years. And if we want to know the true builders of the biggest and the most superior Egyptian pyramids, go back 40,000 years ago. The Sphinx, 40,000 years. The beginning of Luxor and Karnak with those huge obelisks reaching 375 tons. Again, gods and demigods. Abu Simbel, those four huge statues. And uh, they, you know, you go there, the tourist guide will tell you, oh, this is uh, Ramesses II, Ramesses the Conqueror, the most magnificent ruler, blah, blah, blah. However, you look at those faces, you can see four different faces. It is not one person. So everything they tell us really about the ancient history is wrong. And yes, some of those beings, they were very beautiful, by the way. They were, you know, uh, hominids. When you look at them, I would say, yes, they were much bigger than us. They were the true giants. And then when you travel the rest of the Middle East, for example, you go up to northern Israel, beautiful fortress, they call it Nimrod Fortress. Then you go to eastern Turkey, one interesting mountain, on the top of the mountain, somebody dropped 75,000 tons of ground rocks. Rocks are like two, three inches radius. So somebody ground the rocks and they dropped them probably from some type of a spaceship on the top of the mountain. And this, the rocks, they formed a tumulus, conical, you know, hill. They call this mountain in Turkish language Nemrut mountain, or it is Nimrod mountain. You go to Syria, Nimrod fortresses. You go to Iraq, Nimrod. Nimrod is everywhere. And who's Nimrod? Nimrod was a giant, according to the legends. So it was a person, a man. So big, so powerful, so so. It seems that the stories about the giants are omnipresent. I mean, you go to Sardinia and Italy, you go to India, you go to different places. However, there is another extreme: very small people. Now we know, for example, that uh, in Tibet, it seems that long time ago some people landed there. They could not go back to their homes, wherever it was. And they looked like people, like humans, but they were not humans. Or another case, you know, in 1967, the Chinese archaeologist was having a conference in Japan, and he said that 200 pyramids were discovered, he found clay tablets, and then he said that he partially deciphered this clay tablet. And the tablet described a spaceship who, after the cosmic accident, ended up on our planet, it was in irreparable state, 
They could not repair it. They had to stay on the planet. And they continued the tradition from their 